Justin is recording. I am. Hmm. This is going to be the most interesting part of the whole video. <laughs> by, by far. What up, nerds? Welcome to another fantastic, fat and happy episode of Straight Chilling. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 190, recorded on Sunday, November 25th, 2018. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Motel Hell. The people have spoken. Motel Hell 1. Before I get into it, let me introduce everyone else on the show tonight. First up, calling in from Santa Barbara, California, my boy Randy Gandy, G-Landy. What's up? I'm not going to like uh, dwell on this too long, but there is a substantial population of our audience that believes that this election was rigged. And, you know, I'm not here to cast aspersions, but I am going to say people are asking questions, Rob. Hey, uh, people are asking questions and they got to know how the hell Motel Hell wins after you announce something else, buddy. Come on. Floridians know how to count. That's all I can say. That's um. Well, yeah. Yeah, that follows, actually. Yep. <laughs> Last but not least, calling in from Southern Korea, my boy Soju. Southern. What up? It's your boy Snow Stains this week, boys. I'm up Shut here up. Uh, living in a winter wonderland. You know what I'm oh. saying? It's uh, close, beginning to close, look a lot like snow Christmas. Stains. You know, <laughs> Full of snow stains on all them clothes, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Frosty the Snowman and whatnot. Mm. Yes, it rains and so here. Forth. It's related. <laughs> we got rain, so that was cool. We got uh, no, sun. So the craziest thing about it is, I woke up and um, checking the socials, I had a notification one year ago on Facebook, and it was the first snow day the previous year. It literally snowed the same exact day in fucking Seoul this year. And November. The post office was as efficient as the weather, weather service, <laughs> like clockwork. Dude, weather and create it legit like the last week of like the third month, it changes seasons. It's like on point every <laughs> fucking time. It's blowing me away. How was your Korean Thanksgiving? It was dope. It was dope, but full of Jack Daniels. I did a little special, <laughs> a little special for possibly maybe the Patreons. I don't know. I don't know how Bob's gonna use that, but I got got jacked up on Jack Daniels and did a little little review. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna make it a Patreon exclusive or <laughs> tag it on the uh, the last show of the year. I don't know. I haven't decided. Ah, oh, there. I, I love that on your Thanksgiving you chose to be thankful for hating <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> hey, that was Spoilers. a special request from Bob. Bob, no, I was, wait, 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 wait. I was on that text string, and what happened was somebody's like, "Time to record a review of Halloween." LOL, and I think it was you. And Rob's oh, like, do oh, it. <laughs> no, no, I think he said you should record I a follow-up yeah. while you're drunk. And I was it, like, okay. It, I didn't really mean it, but when you were like, I'm doing it, I was like, sweet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that'll work. How was your Thanksgiving, Randy? It was pretty good. We did a uh, low-key, just the two of us, Becky and I. Um, the fams were uh, on the other side of the goddamn world, so we did not go to them. Um, did not have the funds for that. So we kind of hung around the house, made up our, uh, our Thanksgiving meal here, and watched so much television that I have no longer any brain. It's gone. It was liquidated. It's gone. It was never there. Sorry. That's fair. Sorry. Everybody get your Black Friday shopping on. Nah. <laughs> you know what I bought on Black Friday? Legit? No. <laughs> a straight chilling tea. Ooh, that's a good call. I don't, I don't know if they're still running a special or not. They were doing like a you know, Black Friday it. special. I know they extended it. I don't yeah. know how long, though. Okay, it's like well, if you're here... Yeah, it was. It's like usually twenty dollars, and it was marked down to fourteen. So that's a solid. That's a solid chunk of change. Um, yeah, so I bad. got. Yeah, I got Randy. I, anytime I come to America, I got to like stock up. So I'm coming home for Christmas 
And I was like, I need to go ahead and get that tea ordered. So it's waiting for me when I get there. And I got Randy's new Florida orange pumpkin pulp tea or whatever. That shit looks Pompin. legit. Um, <laughs> yeah, that that, that uh, tea is only sold, to my knowledge, about two, uh, oh, yeah. two shirts. So if anybody wants to get in there and validate me a little bit, <laughs> go ahead and buy one of our uh, pumpkin shirts. It's, it's a, a dope shirt. design, right? It's a great Christmas gift, too, especially if that deal's still going on. Yeah. Like that, like we do a Secret Santa every year, and that was going to be my request. Like, oh, if anybody gets me, give me that straight. But I just bought it for myself. As as adulthood goes. Yeah. that's You don't, you don't want to entrust that to anyone else. What's money? No. <laughs> it's nothing. It's nothing. Very cool. Well, let's get into what we've been watching this week, gentlemen. Randy, what you been watching? I watched, like I said, just too much of everything. First of all, with the biggest amount of love possible, uh, watched Dinners of Death on Shudder with Joe Bob Briggs. And uh, we actually actually live tweeted the Richard? whole goddamn thing. Richard Bibbs himself. Um, uh, from fucking six to four, I was up fucking watching four great ass movies. Fucking get this, get this lineup. Texas Chainsaw. You got your Hills Have Eyes. You got your Dead or Alive. <laughs> well, we got Back of Rob's Eyelids. I could you got hang. Dead or Alive. And you got fucking Blood Rage in the clutch. Last fucking. Uh, I was, I was I, actually going yeah. to be sincerely disappointed if they didn't do Blood Rage. Dude, Blood Rage, it, the fact that it was included, I was really stoked. I was really excited to hear that it did get included. And by the grace of Randy, he uh, let me watch uh, <laughs> some right. some Mr. Bibbs from his lap. <laughs> the fucking yeah. technology we have these days. I'm a fucking South Korea, but can't get Shutter over here. So I'm watching Richard Bibbs from Randy's lap in California. Well, good's a corporate account. Legit Legit watching that. The whole corporation can't use it. All right. Dude, it was working out, though. We were watching Chainsaw. We were listening to Bibbs. We were chatting it up. It was a good little time. Bob jumped in. Everybody has. You had to go to work, and Rob fell asleep, though. So (laughs) I tried so hard. He took two and a half, almost three hours to get through Texas Chainsaw alone. And I love wow. the man, and I want to hear every word he has to say. But I mean, that was it was midnight before the second movie ever started in, on the Eastern uh, Standard Time. That is, so I mean, after uh, the Hills Have Eyes ended, I was done, man. <laughs> I had to go to bed. It was, um, dude. That dude was dropping some interesting knowledge on Chainsaw. I was dude, on all of it. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the only part I watched, but I was excited to hear him talk about it and then bummed that we weren't covering it. And then even more fucking pissed off when I actually watched the movie we were watching. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Hotel Hell. It's, it's on equal ground. Um, oh, my God. What else did I watch? I also watched a uh, Christian comedian documentary called Chon. I, actually, I don't remember what it's called, but the lady's name's Chonda Pierce. Becky threw it on. I was extremely stoned. Of and course. I, of course she did. And it was 100% the most depressing thing I have ever watched. <laughs> I've, Damn. Because like, Becky's it. thrown on some depressing shit. I know that yeah, for a fact. Becky has thrown on some shit that will make you tear up in the opening fucking act. This shit was a sleeper, though. It's a Christian comedian. And the thing's called, like, like dying with laughter or some shit like that. And the whole thing, it's fucking nuts. It, like, when you're stoned, it's like a journey. You go from, like, really dumb mom-level humor, Southern baptist things going on, which is like, oh, okay, this is dumb, and I can make fun of it, whatever. But then she starts going into her personal life. Like, her personal life is fucked up. And the whole series is basically her being like, I'm going to make it, though. Like, that's the whole fucking point of it is it's, it's clearly self-funded. My first time because my husband died. Done it. Oh. Fucking crazy. It it was depressing. What happened? You, you just robot it out, but then when you came back here, it was just like, it's fucking crazy. 
So we just got this gobbledygook. <laughs> it's like, it's fucking crazy. No, that's probably for the best. That was the Lord censoring me so that you can all go out and watch Chanda Pierce and find out the fucked up story for yourself. Praise Chanda. That. And then I drew fucking my daily drawings and like the had the most success I've ever had because I drew a fucking toaster. And I don't understand. I and don't, then what happened? I, then what did you draw? I Well, no, I drew a... a, a, a a stand mixer and people loved it and i was like okay well it's fucking black friday people maybe people want to like buy a kitchen aid and they're it's like kitchen aid dog and i'm like okay maybe people love that i guess and then i drew a fucking shitty toaster the next day and people blew it up like it was the most (laughs) engagement i have ever had on instagram for anything and he's he's pissed about it because randy cannot stand the fact that the mediocrity is what's taking him straight to the top right randy it's not even that it's it's just baffling i don't mind validation believe me i don't mind (laughs) but that said, I just, I have to like, it's like I just fucking stumbled on the Rosetta Stone. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is this? What are these? I have to decipher what this means for my life. I just ki- keep kicking out those appliances. I told Randy he's the new Campbell Soup guy. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, w- Warthog. Yeah. Warthog. Warthog? Warthog. Randy Warthog? Randy Warthog. I think. Just draw yeah. a spoon, man. Just. Just a spoon. I'm, See what I'm happens. I'm going to I'm gonna draw a Rocco's Modern Life thing and just do a, bo- a, a, a jar of mayo and see how that goes. <laughs> draw a toothpick. Dude, it's probably going to blow <laughs> up, dude. <laughs> Fucking people love mayonnaise. That shit's gross, but people love it. Oh, well, shit. That's a debate for another day, but yes. You been watching anything else? I mean, so many things, but I'm just going to stop. <laughs> like, I... I There's did. so much. Juice, what you been watching? Um, so here's the thing. Once uh, Thanksgiving Day drops, it's it's Christmas season, full full blown. Um, the Christmas tunes come out. I got a new Christmas playlist dropping whenever December first comes out, and um, I've been hitting the uh, Christmas movies. Starting off with a Nightmare Before Christmas, which just so happens to be an option. On our next month poll, we still have five days Whoa. to vote. Really calling here's, your shot uh, there. Well, here's, oh man, and not only that, but on Thanksgiving Day too, or the day after, whatever, they dropped the new trailer for the like the new Lion King, which is like live action, which it's not because it's no, not a fucking real lion not. running around. The real, it's, they it's have just, real lion actors. It's Acting. just a different kind of animation, but whatever. But it was like, <laughs> made me think, and I was like, if they did this shit with A Nightmare Before Christmas, it would be so fucking dope. Because <laughs> that shit is, fu- some of that shit, like fucking a skeleton coming down this kid's <laughs> fucking chimney and handing him a present that's got a severed, shrunken head, rotting head, like <laughs> That shit would be so Yeah, but it would be in dark. the style of like Beetlejuice or something because yeah, it's it'd be fun. goofy. You can't nah, you can't extract not. the burden from it, really. Yeah. But they should try because it would be so cool they and it would be like super creepy. Like if they did it like, oh my god, it looks real like Lion King, like fucking skeleton. That shit would be so fucking cool. I would love it. Don't but worry, they I... gotta print money somehow. I'm sure they'll do it eventually. <laughs> That's that's definitely in my yearly rotation, and I think I've gone on the rant before, but it's st- it like blows my mind that people are like, it's a Halloween movie, it's not a Christmas movie. It's like they're it's wrong. So yeah. clearly a Christmas, it's a I Christmas. Agree. <laughs> they're I like, agree. oh my god. But I definitely said this hear... before, and I don't care either way. <laughs> so that's that's still up for grabs, though. I actually haven't checked in. What's our Patreon? That's right. Oh, yeah. So. Okay. I, I should have talked about this off the top, but yeah, our, our December poll pick is still up on Patreon, so if you support us at the $5 level or above, you're eligible to vote on our December poll pick. The three movies that are up there are Misery, Nightmare Before Christmas, and The Shining. And I think last time I checked, Misery had like three votes, The Shining had four, and I think Nightmare had zero. Um, so the Shining? Still- the shinning but you've got till uh the end of this month so come december 1st you can no longer vote um so make sure you vote this week and um 
and we'll see we'll see who the victor is. I don't know. And we'll be talking about one of these three movies uh, come December. Also, and somebody is going to be butthurt about it. True. Also, one speak, of us. <laughs> speaking of a uh, Patreon, we have a new patron. Yes, we Whoa. do. We people must still support salute. us. So somehow, some way, people choose to support us, and it's fucking cool, and we appreciate the hell out of it. Um, it helps us cover the monthly cost of making this show. Um, and a, a big shout out and a big thanks to Marina for for hitting us up on Patreon. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, thank Marina. You. Thank you. Thank we you. Appreciate it. You are the shit. And also, uh, she voted for the correct movie um, on the December poll pick. Just to let you know. So. Here's the thing. Uh, At this point, like I'm fine with The Shining winning because I realize, like I that's a quality film. Like at least you know we're going to be talking oh, about something God. quality. <laughs> But you oh, know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all we talk about. Uh, Juice. Anything? Anything else you've been watching? Uh, I'll save it for next week. I've been watching a lot too, like Randy. It's just the holiday weekend, you know. But uh, there's too much to cover. I know. You know. I mean, we are running out of tape, so I, I guess I'll go ahead and go. Uh, I watched a movie called Cam on Netflix. Oh, I watched was... that too. <laughs> oh, no shit. It's a, it's like a Blumhouse movie that I guess Netflix bought, and it, I guess like the easiest way to describe it is it feels kind of kind of like a, a an episode of Black Mirror basically, um, but it's about a cam girl who kind of gets her identity stolen, and um, it <laughs> in in a way that seems impossible, like almost like she has a twin or something, and it's sort of a mystery and. You follow her throughout the movie. She's trying to like get her account back because all the money that should be going to her isn't, and it kind of confronts like sex work and like identity theft in sort of an interesting way. And it's not very like when you think of a movie about a cam girl, you think it'd be kind of um, uh, exploitative, I guess. It, it didn't really feel that way though to me. No, it didn't. Uh, it was pretty good. I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. It didn't blow my mind, but I. I, I don't know. I thought it was solid. If you like Black Mirror, I feel like you'll definitely enjoy Cam. It's an interesting movie. I have so many questions, though, about yeah. the way that it concludes. Uh, s- several, several questions, but I, can, I, don't, I don't feel right bringing it up right now yeah, with yeah. Uh, spoilers and all being what they are and it being a new movie. But that movie, I mean, that, it's, wait, it's is a... It a... Is it, like, designed to be, like, a horror movie? I guess, like, kind of psychological I don't thriller know. if you yeah, think of Black Mirror. That right, sounds yeah, more accurate, like yeah. And it's like, uh, it keeps the tension pretty much the whole movie. It is a great job at that. I give it all the credit in the world for that. The acting is great. And it's like really unapologetic about like the inner workings of that world, which stuff that I would have never even considered and never thought of. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was really interesting, just purely on like a documentary level. I was like, oh shit, I guess that makes sense that they have it, to do it that way. It was written by someone who used to be a cam girl, which I, is why it seems so thorough. And I guess yeah. she made a deal with the director. I forget who the director is. Uh, whoever it was, she made a deal with it. And it was like, look, you have to cam for like five straight days so that you kind of understand where i'm coming from before you make this movie and he did which i you know kudos to that respect dude. yeah immersing himself in that world it's it's uh i don't know that's it's pretty cool it it, it feels wait, like he had to can't wait like so he had to, like jerk off for oh, i don't i don't know about like the sexual stuff but he had to like sit in front of a cam like i, I don't know oh okay <laughs> like, or anything. he had to have <laughs> an odd i was like damn that's a specific request i yeah. don't know if i'd be down for it yeah, I don't know about that either. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe he did. I got to look into that's, that. I mean, that's, that's how you make the sausage. That's, that's, that's <laughs> how you make a quality <laughs> movie. You jerk um, off in front of a bunch of strangers, and I'm then interested. you make your film, which is jerking off in front of a bunch of strangers. <laughs> so, that's that's pretty much what I was watching. Also, The Dinners of Death, of course, which I uh, I ended up going back and watching the Blood Rage episode, but I didn't. I still haven't finished uh, Dead or Alive. I started it, and I'd never really? seen that movie, movie before. I got like 15 minutes into it before I had to turn it off. But that first 15 minutes was blowing my mind in half. Holy shit, dude! As God. I as I said on the fucking Twitter when I was watching that, I, I ah, was at really? that point pretty tired and pretty drunk. I was. Am I back? Yeah, you're. Good. Yeah, you're back. 
So, like, I was watching that, and I was pretty drunk and pretty tired at that point after a long day of giving thanks. And um, basically, like, what I ended up tweeting was the truth, which was that Joe Bob started out by saying, this is the craziest thing. that Get ready for a movie that will actually make your stomach churn. And not just in, like, I'm, that's not just lip service. Like, saying all kinds of shit. And it legitimately freaked me out. And I was like, am I ready for this? I'm not an emotionally, <laughs> am I emotionally ready for a movie that's real? Is this going to be like Martyrs? What are we talking here? And I'll tell you what, man, it, in some capacity, it did not disappoint. It wasn't what I expected, but it does not disappoint. And like, like you said, Rob, it's like a high fucking wire from yeah. start to finish. That opening is like, was getting all sorts of fellatio on the internet when it happened. And then like from there, the movie just gets more and more convoluted and strange and like, like fun, but crazy as fuck. I loved it. Actually. <laughs> I enjoyed the the intro for sure. I'm going to finish it probably some, sometime this week before the next episode for sure. Um, but it was watching uh, the blood rage uh, episode, like Joe Bob talking about blood rage. He's, he's talking about, UNF, which we all went to school at. He's talking about apartments off Southside Boulevard, which is like around the corner from where we grew up and shit. And like Joe Bob saying "Go Ospreys," blowing my mind, man. Yeah, that shit was I was eating it up. I loved it. That was fucking great. Fucking cool. Anyways, um, that's enough gushing about Joe Bob. Uh, let's go ahead and get in the main feature. Talk about Motel Hell and uh, start off with the back of the box. Motel Hell from 1980. Uh, the plot synopsis is as follows. A seemingly friendly farmer and his sister kidnap unsuspecting travelers and bury them alive, using them to create the special meat they are famous for. Directed by Kevin Connor. Thanks, Kevin. Gentlemen, <laughs> Motel Kevin, Hell. I'm going to feed you to my tarantula. <laughs> <laughs> That's more appropriate. You're such a disease. <laughs> oh my God! It's next on the list. God, well, maybe not next. God help people named Kevin because there's just a ready-made roster of horrible things to say about them at any given time. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty fucked up uh, movie for, but not for the ways you really want for a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Randy, I know you and I we watched this for the first time together. A oh hell yeah! Ago, I, I, I believe. Uh, were you looking forward to talking about it on the show? I was, and it, I, I haven't seen it since then. I remember it having a fucking blast watching it, though, having several drinks and just, like, watching this pretty pretty wild uh, B-movie roll across the screen. So, yeah, I was pretty excited. Juice, was this your first time watching it? First time. First and last. Oh, so highly recommended, right? <laughs> no. <it's... laughs> As some of our slack, <laughs> as some of our slack listeners have already said, I want my two hours back. <laughs> oh God, Randy, would you? Oh, hopefully, me? hopefully, the show is more entertaining than the film. Oh, uh, I wouldn't bet on it, but sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would recommend it, but it's like it's one of those movies that comes with the heavy caveat of, do not watch this movie alone. Watch it when you're prepared to giggle and make dumb jokes over it, and, like. If you if one night you're planning to watch fucking I don't know Wet Hot American Summer, throw this shit on instead, and just get a little thrill out of this. Watch it and experience it as a as a group who is also drinking or otherwise impaired. That'll make it worth your worth your time for sure. See, yeah, I'm I'm gonna touch on that a little bit, but for the recommendation part, and typically, I I'll, I'm usually quick to admit like yeah I watched it alone or yeah you know I wasn't drinking or whatever. Even with the with that, um, I don't. To me, and I haven't experienced this way. I don't even think I would rec. Like I don't even think that would save it for me. <laughs> like <laughs> wow. To, to yeah, to me, I found very little like even kind of charm in this movie to where the fact where I was like, if I were maybe a little tipsy, I would find that kind of humorous. Not really. Like I really just thought it was kind of dumb. And I went and like when Ray is like, I ah, just want instead of watching like what Hot Americans are like, I like it's like, nah, <laughs> <laughs> it's OK to be wrong. It's all right. <laughs> well, we'll see. I'll allow it. Um, I'm going to echo what Randy said. Yeah, I 
definitely don't watch it alone. I would recommend watching it with friends and beers for sure. It's it's dumb as hell, but I found it to be dumb in a fun way, in a fun and entertaining way. Um, so yeah, recommend with the caveat. Let's go ahead and drop the spoiler warning and we'll get into it. Motel, hotel, holiday inn. That's the name of this movie. Fucking Farmer Vincent. Um, fucking creeper. Total fucking creeper. Stealing people. Stealing burying pe- them. <laughs> Taking them. So the movie kind of starts with him like causing this motorcycle to crash. And uh, he takes the girl. And that's sort of like our protagonist throughout the rest of the movie. We kind of oh, follow him following this chick. Kind of. I, I almost yeah, find it difficult to... App- I, it's difficult to apply any level of sense to this movie, really. Like, it, it, it's almost like any sort of fun there is to be had is destroyed by analyzing it. Oh yeah, for each I don't intend second. to analyze. Much it's because it. even, <laughs> oh, even literally saying what the plot is is fucking makes it worse. I mean, <laughs> when you agree that yeah, when you talk about this movie, it ruins it. It's because it's not, <laughs> it's not good. That's why. Serious, if though, if, it if like it's a- if the saving grace of this movie is that you have to watch it with your good friends who you are going to have a good time with anyways cuz you're drinking beer, which is your recommendation, then it's not particularly good. <laughs> That's the like, saving of grace of this movie. Bill. There's kind of kind of a party movie, yeah. It's yeah, like, well, like uh, to to me, it's more like you can get through this movie if you're watching it with friends and having a beer. But there are some movies that like heighten that experience, and then this movie, like to me, like I I would I just, like if I was hanging out with you guys and you're like, oh, it's Tom Motaha, I would be like reluctant. I'd be like, oh, I guess it's like. <laughs> I wouldn't I be know, like, yeah, we're we sure are gonna have a good time with this. It's not the best movie ever by any means, but I don't think it's that bad, man. It's just kind of like a dumb eighties movie with like some yeah. decent gore. There's like a cool chainsaw fight I towards think the there end. There's a lot of cool gore. I don't know. Like that la- that last scene, I guess. Yeah. Like I mean, but it he kinda like gets cut in the gore. side. Like the ultimate like chainsaw battle, like the dude just kinda gets cut in the side. Like I mean pretty, nothing nothing crazy happens. There's some pretty funny shit going I mean well as as far as the gore. No, but I know, but we're talking about gore. You said there's yeah, some pretty yeah. good gore, but I really can't think like well, I really honestly they, can't think of any cool scenes. They of like gore. snap everybody's necks with the backhoe, like they're buried and then they hook them up to the backhoe and That's drive not really away and gory, stuff. though. I don't know. I thought it was cool. And then whenever they're trying to talk, but they can't because their voice box is like being I all hate it. the up. noise they make is disgusting. It's like it's fucking gross. Yeah, to me. What, it, what? That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Well, I know, but it's like so prominent throughout the film. It's just like so like. Ugh, I don't know, and it, not even to where, like, I mean, I, I like it's effective, I guess, but for this movie, that's like supposed to be kind of cheesy, like. It really is just gr- it like grinded on me because it really like it was like grossing me out like one of those things that kind of like gets under your skin like it makes <laughs> sense yeah but as an audible noise that's prominent throughout this film that I'm trying to fucking power through it's just like just another notch I'm just like I like don't want to fucking deal with this movie. I mean you had a hard time with this movie but I don't think it's the movie's fault fault that like that you don't like that sound so much because you dislike the movie. <laughs> like that's like, that sounds like it's your experience in the movie infiltrating your thoughts on mm. like individual components that otherwise work for people. Not necessarily. Cause I don't like, I thought that the, like specifically just the soundtrack in general was really bad. There's this really? one scene. Yeah. There's this one scene where the dude, uh, like the health inspector He's like, you know, sneaking into the garden. And there's just like these fucking noise just like repeating over and over. Like, so just just audibly, I found the movie in general, like with the that kind of sh- soundtrack that I didn't care for and the noises, just the whole like like audible film was unappealing to me. So I don't think I mean, it's that's just like an aesthetic that, choice. Like, oh, like, no, but uh, it that wasn't noise aesthetic choice for the sound. Me, but... That sound was disgusting on purpose. So the fact that yeah. you were disgusted by it was by design. The uh, problem is that you didn't like the rest of the movie, so you had to power through it. And that's not like 
necessarily Wait. anything wrong with that choice in the film. Yeah. My back. Yeah, you're good. Okay. I can yeah, tell I when everybody the same. goes I, aghast yeah. that my <laughs> voice is fucked. It, I guess it's a, a similar kind of thing. I mean, I I don't know. Like it's effective that like that that um that that uh, season of whatever had a tooth monster, but it's like so effective. Like Rob can't watch it because he finds it like absolutely disgusting. So in a similar way, this movie that I'm already not you think finding it was that partic- disgusting to you as disgusted as Rob is towards well, tooth no, man. Not I got that disgusting. Not that <laughs> not that disgusting, but. For, for a movie that I'm already finding like not particularly charming, not particularly interesting, like the acting, like I feel like everybody can agree is not great. The story is pretty dumb. Like yeah, the but it's supposed to be bad acting, you know. It's like a, it's in, it's intentional. Okay, all right. It I'm is just, in this. I'm in just this saying movie. all of these. Th- like the thing is, is like you guys are even bringing up the negatives, but trying to spin them as positives, and so it's hard for me to critique this film because you're just like, well, that's a positive, but you even present it as it like, well, yeah, this movie has bad acting. Well, so I'm like, well, what is my that, job well, what, like, to well, do with this film? Yeah, like it's a bad B movie though. That's like you don't watch B movies because you've got. You know Anthony Hopkins in there, yeah. like just killing it. You, you've got these. So why? That why are do you watch this movie? Why do you watch this movie? It's funny. It, I, I think it's think funny. It was anyway. funny. I did, man. There's... Well, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that's like, I mean, that's matter of opinion. There's not much you can do about that. And if like you're powering through it because of your relationship to the jokes. The fact that you're disgusted, I get it. The fact that you're disgusted with the sounds is a reason to dislike it. Just further reason to dislike it. But for me, as somebody who was enjoying myself for the most part, the first time I saw it, especially, like I thought that any sort of like like visceral reaction I get from it is just an added like flair. It's it's intentionally disgusting me. I'm like, okay, great. Like this movie wants me to have a reaction, and I'm having it. Well done. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the um. This is kind of a swerve, but the, the opening credits, Randy, where they were all like kind of old style looking hotel neon lights. I thought that show was pretty sweet. I don't know. Yeah, I like I like the uh, that stuff, too. And also like the soundtrack. I actually kind of like the soundtrack in this because it's so it's so TV movie. And it's so oh, like and not not I don't mean that as a negative. It's so sweeping, overly sweeping for the subject matter. It doesn't match, and I think that that makes it more of an experience to watch. It's like, in it has it has the same effect on me that like, if you're if you have like fucking a karaoke night and you're watching vacation footage from the Gateway Arch or something as you're singing "Raining Blood" or some shit. Like, I see. I guess it's to me, weird, like, uh, like to it's, yeah to like have it on both ends, I guess. Um, and like I I understand it too. Like I you know like you guys have just a a different reaction to these elements that we can both agree are like bad, I guess. Yeah, but, the thi- but, the but the thing, but I guess the thing about it to me where you're like, well, yeah, so they want you to have that reaction. So to me, it's effective. It's like, okay, that's fair. But at the same time, like we, like none of us, I don't think particularly like the like shitty movies, like, like human centipede, like human centipede does stupid shit to get a reaction out of you. And just because like you react to it, just because they can, sh- or even like horror, p- or I mean, what, like gore porn, no, not gore porn, torture, torture. porn, yeah. like torture porn, like just because like they're going to like show somebody's eyeball getting squeezed out of their head for like the, for this long shot. And like, you're going to like viscerally like react to it, like doesn't like mean that it's particularly good like to play devil's advocate to say like yeah just because i'm getting no, a reaction of it doesn't mean personal, it's particularly well, i'm not saying it's good because it's of that priority. i'm saying yeah i'm not saying it yeah i'm not saying it's good because of that and i'm i'm saying that i enjoyed that because it was i enjoy these like like these aspects that like we say like some of the acting is a little shoddy and whether it's on purpose or not i that adds to the experience for me because i'm not going to this movie for the fucking i'm not it's not a kubrick movie <laughs> This yeah. is a movie that was shot in five weeks, and um, like, I don't, I don't look to this movie for anything other than like ridiculous, like over the top bullshit and dumb lines and fucking half shitty effects, and like, I like those things about it. It's intended to be a dark comedy. It's listed as a comedy first, yeah, and that's pretty obvious. If you don't like the comedy of it, that is 
perfectly fair. That it makes perfect sense why you wouldn't like those elements because that that is what the movie is going for. If you're not into that, then you're not into what this movie is trying to be. <laughs> Like yeah, that's like and I that's guess... like like pissed at somebody for not liking fucking Paw Patrol or something as a thirty year old man. Like, of course that you're not gonna like it. That's not for you. Then, <laughs> yeah, and I guess too, like really, um, I I didn't even like occur to me like consciously like I really don't like the comedy in this film. I really just like watched it and like and realized that I you know like it was like written to be a dark comedy, but it wasn't even like the jokes weren't landing. I really just did if like particularly find anything like funny about it. Like I, like I under like the, I guess the ridiculousness of it, like of what is happening and of the story itself. But it, to me, it wasn't like they were like trying to land like these jokes. It was just a bunch of just outlandish premises that I guess was the comedy aspect of it. Like it didn't it, do you, like, does that make sense? Yeah. They, yeah, they, were, they weren't actually like delivering jokes. It was situational and same. Yeah. Like the fucking, like the Ivan and the terribles band, they're all like in the van driving yeah. down the road, smoking pot, delivering the worst lines that have ever been written in the history of the fucking cinema. And the dude, one of the dudes in the van I noticed has like the second fakest facial hair I've ever seen next to the cop in sleepaway <laughs> camp. It's like so clearly pasted on. You can see the glue around like the edges of the fucking beard. Damn. It looks I didn't notice that. Hilariously bad. And it was crazy. Honestly, me up. This movie kind of has like the the thing that makes it work for me is kind of X Factory. It it really is about charm for me, and if you if it's not charming you, then it's not going to work. That's pretty much what it comes down to, I think. And yeah. I can totally see why somebody would like it and somebody would hate it. Like it makes perfect sense either way because it comes down to that factor that you kind of is a plinko game. It either you win or you don't. <laughs> either you land, <laughs> either it lands where it's supposed to, and it's in, like, or it just fucking doesn't, <laughs> and you don't yeah. get the fucking points for trying. So and that, I, I can see it being pretty divisive. The, the, the idea the, of comparing yeah. it to like human centipede, I get what you're saying. Like, you know, not not something being like effective, like an, an an element being effective doesn't necessarily save a movie if you don't like the rest of the movie. There's nobody arguing that for sure. Yeah. So I get that. I, yeah. I for me, I, I liked it a hell of a lot more when it wasn't just me sitting at my table drawing and ha like. Like not not drunk, not like not enjoying it with a buddy, not doing any of the things that I think would make this movie fucking great and has for like I had a great time watching it the first time we watched it because I was not prepared for what was coming. And I was not like, I don't know, I, I was I was down for something silly and stupid. And that's what I got. So I was pretty happy with it this time around. I was I knew it was coming and I was also like just not in a silly mood because I wasn't drinking and hanging out. I was just me in front of a fucking screen. Yeah, it just it, it doesn't really work for me in that context. And there are some like you're right. There are a lot of like humorous premises, but not a lot of like like punchlines that are are not not like they could have punched up this dialogue pretty hard and made it work a little better. But they didn't really. I feel like they didn't go full thrust goofy as hard as they could have, and they didn't go full thrust. Um, like horror, over the top horror shit. Either way, so yeah. I, I that that it kind of hits this middling ground where it's a little bit of comedy and it kind of slides back the scale on horror a lot. And you know, that, I mean, it's really up to the. It, it's tough to say with any accuracy that that it would be better if it did it differently because it just kind of is what it is. Honestly, like I don't think you could replicate the tone of this movie if you tried. Yeah. And I guess that was like, you hit it spot on. Uh, like, honestly, like when I was done with it, like thinking about, it, I was like, well, I mean, like I get that it was trying to be a comedy, but I can't like pick out anything that was particularly funny to me. And also, like, I know it's supposed to be a horror movie, but really, like, I was telling Bob, like, I was kind of specifically paying attention because once it got to the end, I was like, okay, this is, like, the part I'm going to enjoy, I guess, because I love a good B movie, like, gore, for, you know, like, mm -hmm, shit yeah. going crazy and just splattering all over the place. And I was like, okay, well, at least I get this. And then they had this chainsaw battle, and they don't even give me that. And I was like, well, what, then, like, what is the fucking point of this movie? They're not doing, they're not really giving... Like, they're making a particular type of movie that people expect certain things out of, but not giving them 
any of those things. Like, like Randy said, they're not really diving into any of those elements. It's like kind of a comedy and it's like kind of like a horror movie, but ultimately it's just, it's like kind of nothing. <laughs> like, I mean, it falls flat on both ends to me. I think it's heavy on the comedy for sure. And, and light on the horror, the horror definitely comes in in the third act. And, and also just like the planting scenes that are sort of interspersed uh, throughout the movie. But like the my favorite parts are definitely like the more slapsticky moments, like uh, like the band who's driving in the van and the, the like super hipster couple that pull up at the hotel and they're like looking for a room and the dude and the swingers, goofy. yeah, the swingers, <laughs> the, the swingers part. cracked my this, ass. The up. swingers was probably like the funniest part. That He's was wearing like... a beret. And I thought like... that was the actor who played Gomez Adams for a while, like <laughs> the first time I saw. Like or like this time I was watching, I was like, he looks like Gomez Adams. And that is kind of a perfect role. <laughs> like, it's kind of like a perfect echo of that character um, <laughs> in a lot of ways. The, I don't the know. Chick, when they go in the room and the chick just starts whipping every item yeah, in the entire cry. room, breaking everything. <laughs> that's, that's going that full comedy. Weird, I, I didn't. Yeah. How, how they got there, though, I didn't really understand. And it, it does it matter at all but really just trying to make sense of it i couldn't understand how they found the place like they had a pamphlet and yeah, they were I like oh we didn't think we would make this issue and i was like what what is this like a swing for the meat they wanted to that they, they wanted to like sample the meat i guess because they're famous wait for... it was but it was oh. implied that like it was like they knew it was like a swinger place no it is and that's also written on the fucking pamphlet. The pamphlet actually says yeah. at the bottom, swingers welcome. And yeah. I have no idea why that pamphlet exists. Yeah, that's why I was like, what the fuck? Did is they this? put that in Who explicitly knows? to get like swingers <laughs> to plant in their garden? That's the only explanation. They do not spend a second worrying about it. And that's kind of one of the things I love about this movie is if like it like it'll just leave a fucking loose thread loose as shit and it won't give a fuck to go back on it. Like the my ex favorite, oh, man. my favorite line in this movie is when they're the swingers are in the hotel room and the dude comes out of the bathroom and he's in his full get up with like the orange onesie and the skirt and he just says, Where's my jelly? <laughs> <laughs> fucking perfect. That's the best. That was part great. Of the movie. So the best, the funniest part to me was actually right at the beginning where the family was there with their twin girls or whatever, and the girls yeah. run screaming back to the car, and Farmer Vincent's like, and they're just screaming in the car, and he's like, ah, here, I'll, uh, I'll calm him down, and he walks over to the window, and goes, <laughs> he's like, like, and they just stop screaming. He goes, and he just gives this big smile. He's like, all right, nice seeing you, or whatever. <laughs> For some reason, the way he does that, it's so unexpected and it's so fucking insanely goofy in a movie that were you didn't really have that laid out in front of you just yet at that point that it was going to be goofy at all right. or at least not way not intentionally so and at that, that point you're like oh okay this movie's taking the piss out of other movies here a little bit crazy old coot yeah i like that and like yeah like the swingers for sure i, I like the, the just the visual of the planted heads the go the disgusting sound makes it funnier for me because it's so like stupid it's the dumbest fucking idea in the world that they're like planting people in the ground purely for the idea like it's like they, they started this whole movie with that idea they work backwards from the idea yeah. of people sprouting from the earth like flowers and just like that that's like there's no reason you don't plant pigs in the fucking field it doesn't make yeah, like, that was sense. the only thing yeah like why the fuck are they actually and they in the ground the except to keep them trapped yeah that was yeah th once they busted <laughs> out the, the fucking wheel i was like oh my god i love that i don't know it doesn't make thing. any sense at it's all. very like late 70s pseudo science-y nonsense well, it to also just felt like there's so many aspects like yeah they're planted in the ground and yeah, like we're gonna hit in a time. It was just like it felt like people, like writers sitting in a room, just like throwing shit to the wall, man. Like I was right. just like, oh my god. Yeah, that's I right. think that's the charm <laughs> of it. But yeah, it's still personal taste. You just don't. Yeah, you don't. You don't like that shit. I don't know. That's what those. Those are the best parts of the movie for me. The I I like the bad shit. It, it is a. It is like like a roll ass moment though. I liked it though at the end. Like I, when I saw him doing that, I had forgotten about it. When I saw him doing that, I was like, oh, fuck. I forgot about the scene where he brings out, like, 
a child lighting kit from Spencer's Gifts and start uses it to quote unquote hypnotize these people just to break their necks while they're helplessly fucking implanted in the earth for no reason anyway. You could just fucking ax those bitches and drag them back to your fucking freezer. That you don't have to do any of this shit. <laughs> That's what's so bombastic about it, and I like that. I like that part of it. But like, it's it's a lot more fun when you can be like w- turn to somebody and say what the fuck like that's really paramount to the enjoyment of this film for me so i think we, we got to talk a little bit about terry the chick who like farmer vincent yes in the beginning of the movie. just because i it's so crazy to me it, it's like another batshit uh, yeah. part of the movie where like she gets taken and her boyfriend allegedly dies in this motorcycle or her accident. husband and they imply that maybe they were married uh, she, she was her only and then she trailed off this movie doesn't give a fuck. This movie doesn't. No, doesn't. Give a fuck. And that's <laughs> the thing. There's there's no person who's relatable, and this. there's nobody to like that's anchor true. yourself that's to. That's true, but that's true in Sleepaway Camp. Even... Too. Fuck Sleepaway Camp. Oh no. yeah, <laughs> it's just not your jam. Yeah, this, but this but, chick. But gets... to say like B movie, like that's not necessarily true. Like I mean, even what's the dude where the 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 New Zealand movie where the dude cuts up all the people with like lawnmowers Dead and alive. shit? Dead alive. Yeah, I mean, like I like slapsticky, crazy horror, like gore. It's just yeah. like these type of movies. That's like something. It's just like when you when you can point to everything and say, yeah, that's not good, and it really just comes down to your personal reaction to it. Then it's hard to like. It's hard to analyze it because, as you yeah. said, once you – well, yeah, once you start analyzing it, sounds like shit. It's because it's kind of shit, and you just happen to prefer shit. Like, like it's hard to talk talk about it, I guess. I think I we're don't talking know, about man. it fine. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, I mean, yeah. Just, it's, but I mean, to be like, oh, you don't like sleepaway camp, so, like, it's not your thing. It's like, I like things like there's that. There's two it's scales. Just, We've discussed this before. There's two right. scales yeah, yeah, yeah. about in, of enjoyment. There's whether or not something is is intrinsically good for its on it and stands <laughs> on its own merits as being good. And then there's your enjoyment of the movie. This movie is hard yes on the bottom second scale and hard no on the first. Nobody is arguing that this movie is good. Let's be <laughs> perfectly clear. Nobody's arguing this movie is good in the sense that it's fucking like art. Nobody's gonna ask for a criterion yeah. of this shit. This is a schlocky, know, Bob's thinking um, about that. Bob's poorly written, really... half, I've, half I've got the Scream Factory version, which is basically the Criterion. Well, okay, but that's Please not continue. Criterion, though. I can that's see Bob's the... like face thinking, like, I might need to disagree with Randy on this. <laughs> As <laughs> the words are coming out of your mouth. That's fine. Rock I look. think that it's, it's, it's absolutely a dumb movie. I think, like, I, like as much as I fucking... I'm okay with this movie. It's not Sleepaway Camp, though. I will give it that. Like, there's, there's, there's schlocky movies that I think are more fun than this. And yeah, this is fun. no five star Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> God. Like, this God is help like, us. like I don't know, man. I don't think it's like wrong to say that this movie is good for me. Like, like watching <laughs> shitty movies is enjoyable that's why people continue to make them and sell them because they get sold because people like watching shitty movies if you take an analytical mind to it 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 makes it shittier but that also in and of itself is enjoyable questioning why the fuck what's her face the girl who was stolen just sticks around and falls in love with like two of them one of two people it doesn't make any sense like 70 what the fuck is going on? Like this woman has like the weakest will of all time. She's manipulatable based on a, like all you have to do is like bat your eyelashes and you get whatever you want from her. She's like a genie. She, she doesn't. She's bang, not. Having... She tries to bang fucking Farmer Vincent. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, ma'am. We need to be wed first. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know, man. I guess that was actually that was the most effective, like effective part of this movie. Is like him and his sister are at least like very like creepy, undesirable people. Like in yeah. they like they feel like backwoods, you know, Puritan weirdos. Like and they legitimately feel like that. You're like, oh, like these these freaking weirdos. Like, you know, like at least that, like the, especially the sister. Like I thought like the sister was effective in the role that she was playing. Yeah, yeah. she was She's creepy. And then you got the sheriff who's their brother as well. And he like is yeah. trying to mac, mac on Terry, the, the girl. 
<laughs> I was also like really disappointed that he I mean I guess it kind of plays into his character, but that he was like their brother and the sheriff and had yeah. like no idea what was going on, but also like turns out to be the hero, even though he's like super rapey. Like it's just none of that like sat well with me because when they first were like, oh, here's my brother and he's the sheriff. And like he was like, oh, he buried like your husband or your boyfriend where I was like, okay, like they're all in on it. And it's, you know, it's kind of like a text. It's like, I thought like, okay, this is kind of like a spoof on Texas chainsaw. Like you got right, a dude yeah. who's like a charge. And I was like, okay, like I could get behind that. But then they just seem to like fumble all of that to me. Cause then they're like, Oh no, the brother's just an idiot. And he actually doesn't know, but he's going to be the hero. But he, we also show, show him being like super shitty in his own right. It's like, well, Fuck, like I don't I don't know who to like See, attach myself to now. This is no, like I'm... that thing where this is that thing where for me where I grew up on Mystery Science Theater. That's like one of my favorite things of all time. And that's one of the reasons I like shitty movies because even like if I'm sitting with people and making jokes about this movie, it becomes an immensely enjoyable experience. I watched their gauntlet, some of it. I watched fucking Atlantic Rim, the fucking asylum picture. I don't know if I would ever, ever choose to watch that on my own. I have to watch that shit. It is fucking dumb. <laughs> and it's like everything you analyze just falls apart and breaks. And it ma the mess is hilarious. But it's only hilarious if you're like joking around with people or watching people make jokes about it directly, which is what makes that work. So like uh, to me, if you're if you're if you like that sort of thing, then you're gonna like these shitty movies. Analyzing them and having them fall apart is just as fun for me as analyzing fucking Get Out and finding all the working pieces and bells and whistles that you didn't notice before. There's something fun about seeing the wreckage as much as there is about seeing the fucking machine running perfectly. I concur with that notion. I think this movie is very enjoyable to watch, even though it's it, it's not particularly good in any one way or another, but I don't think it's trying to be. That's kind of the point of it. But if you're not in the mood for that kind of thing, you're not in the mood for that kind of thing. I think it's uh, hilarious when uh, the sheriff says, you know, Vince, uh, Farmer Vincent's pecker don't work no more. It's, uh, <laughs> fucking this fucking cracks shit. me up, man. I don't know. It's dumb. And it, may, maybe the uh, the ending, like a, like a true critique that you could have of this, Justin, which you brought up, it's like this is the comedy horror movie. And they really kind of pull the final punch in the end. Like when they're hey, having this big chainsaw battle, they kind of they kind of pull the punch. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I would have liked to have seen some more gore. Like you, you kind of cited um, Dead Alive, which I is, agree with that wholeheartedly, actually. Which is among one of the goriest movies like I have ever seen. You know, yeah. probably didn't have the budget to go quite that far. But if it had a tenth of that, though, I think yeah. this movie would have jumped up a level for me. I, I totally agree with that. Like, if if this is going to be considered any kind of horror movie and not just a slapstick, like, comedy with horror elements, then you kind of got to commit in some way to the horror part. And I don't think this movie really does. Like, just referencing cannibalism isn't horror. <laughs> like, like, yeah. I, don't, I just don't see that. It's definitely a comedy. It's screwball, and it's got some horror elements, but it's not horror it's not like it doesn't have enough horror elements for me to really quantify it in that way yeah it kind of cribs off texas chainsaw and as far as like the chainsaw battle goes texas chainsaw 2 which yeah, is for sure which is they they obviously do it much better in texas chainsaw 2 it's dual wielding chainsaws and then leatherface with like this six foot blade that, that works great. because Dennis fucking hopper works right so that's that's a that's a, a goofy <laughs> dumb movie that has Dennis fucking Hopper, and that elevates uh -huh. that movie. So when you have a great performance in a movie like that, it's great. But when you don't, you have to at least have the escalation of of um, just events. Like, things have to happen at a much quicker rate than it happens in this movie, and not just, like, goofy things, but, like, not necessarily even plot things, just fucking, like, gore things, or, like, you have to have some sort of spectacle to hang your hat on, I think. Well, because even to me, there wasn't even really any kind of moment of real like tension, like even as yeah. a thing, like because even from the beginning, you know, they're eating people. So there's not even like any kind of reveal. Like, I mean, there's never any kind of mystery or tension or like yeah. reveal no or twit. Like there's there's really nothing to like 
chew on. It's really just like I, I don't know. And then you know and then too like botching the ending with like, well, damn, I don't even get like a spectacle out of it. It's just like, oh, it's just so disappointing. <laughs> I really like. You're right, and the only thing that like I, that I got enjoyment out of because of that, like the, as a result of that, was even though I would have much rather seen fucking Farmer Vincent or somebody get beheaded or some shit just to give you a nice big like climactic spectacle, the climax that we got was so underwhelming, and it was all just one fucking rim shot of a joke where he says. I'm a, my life's a lie. I've always used <laughs> preservatives. The the fucking badumcha that comes after I that is the funny part of that movie oh for all God. the wrong reasons. Like, so, <laughs> like they they undercut themselves so hard that it's comedic, and I don't care if it's intentional or not. It is fucking hilarious to me, and I wish so hard they could have done that and also given you the spectacle that you want to have. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. the sister being buried upside down, I was like, oh, that, like, the whole thing is they're going to eat her a lot, or, like, because they haven't really eaten, you know? They're feeding them through, like, mm-hmm. these two... Or just, like, something. it's just, like, she's buried upside down with her legs. I was just like, oh, my God, this fucking movie... Just constantly disappointing me. Yeah, it's like the comedy doesn't always work for me either. But when it does, uh, even be it intentional or not, I find comedy in this movie, and it, I think that's that makes everything else sort of somewhat worthwhile. But it has to be so heavily qualified that I totally see why people would distance themselves from this movie. Me too. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I definitely get it. There's um, uh, there's a, there's a lot that you could. Uh have issue with here uh, i thought for a long time the first time i watched this movie the whole movie i went the whole fucking movie thinking that farmer vincent and his sister were actually dating or something i thought they were oh, married yeah or married or something yeah i thought so yeah they do not clearly define any aspect of this movie except that they are eating fucking people and they keep them in the ground that's the only element that is stone cold solid yeah. Also, that yeah. weird like preacher too that like <laughs> is like kind of in the movie. Like he's on the TV, and then you actually see him, and like that was a weird thing to I have, include. Too. I have trivia about that shit. Okay, cool. I'd like I'm like that's the one thing where I was like, this is interesting, kind of, or I don't know, like where are they going with this? And then that kind of just like didn't do anything either. And I was like, damn it! Like when he. Like, it was interesting, like, when he was on the TV and it kind of added to the atmosphere and stuff, because he's always on the radio or he's always on the TV. And then when he actually shows up, I was like, okay, like, here's, like, something, but then nothing. And, uh, yeah, they don't really make good on it. Again, yeah. That's a lot. There's true. Like, they, when they leave threads, it, it's a double-edged sword. It's funny to me when they leave, like, these big threads that make, like, make the whole thing unravel, like, in terms of plot, because it's, why, why would this movie bother with that? That's hilarious that they don't. <laughs> But at the same time, there's some threads I really wish they had pulled like that. <laughs> like, I want to see, I, you could expect, look at that, okay, like the priest. Oh, no. I think you're good. I think you're good. That's okay. the new, that's the new signal, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your face I, it's up. not new every time you do that. Um, but yeah, the, the, like, you, I kind of expected him to, at one point, to, like, end up in a fight scene a la Dead Alive, as a matter of fact. Like, have that sort of, like, like dumb inversion of a priest. Or have, like, that, or, like, Hot Fuzz, where he got, got the, the priest is like, put down your weapons. And they say, no, sir, or whatever. And he's like, oh, fuck you. And then he starts shooting them with Uzis or some shit. Like, I thought I that might be. I for the Lord. I kick ass for the Lord. I kind of expected something like that to happen, and the fact that it didn't or nothing really came out of that at all, you know, it's it's an unresolved note. Yeah, he does speak in tongues in one scene, which I would crack me up a little bit. But anyway, I, is there anything else we need to discuss before we rate this thing? I don't think so, man. Yeah, we basically yeah. It already. Yeah, yeah, we touched it all. We touched it, Randy. Why don't you kick us off out of five? How do you feel about Motel Hell? Um, what I was like I was saying earlier, this movie is uh, dumb and it's fun for the right kind of person in the right kind of setting. And the fact that I have to qualify it so heavily isn't a great sign uh, for most people. Like as a review and taking into account all t- all tastes and all personalities, I'm gonna be as fair as I can be and give this a two and a half. I think that half of me really recognizes this as a fun time, and half of me 
totally recognizes everything about this movie that sucks, and I can't really recommend it heavily based on that. For my tastes, it kind of works under certain <laughs> fucking lab conditions, and I'm not going to like sit here and pretend like that doesn't have any bearing on how other people are going to see it. So yeah, two and a half. It's enjoyable. It's not great. It's Well, it's definitely not great. It's not good, but it's fun in the right setting. That's the long and short. Cool. Juice, out of five, how do you feel? Um, so I was going to give it a one star, but I got to be fair and uh, stick to my own metric and give it the half star for the Yabos. <laughs> so it's going to end up at a 1.5. Um, and yeah, I just... Um, I guess some positives I could say about this movie is um, I like the the idea is, I guess, kind of like interesting or like unique. Like they kind of actually that was like you said, that was kind of the most fleshed out thing about this movie is like this guy has an idea and he's got like a um, he's like motivated by it, too. He thinks he's like saving the world. Like he's got his own like self-righteous kind of thing about it. Like even though it's ridiculous, it's at least like it's like thought out. Like they, he gets these people that are traveling through town that, you know, like aren't going to be missed. And he cuts their vocal cords and he feeds them until he thinks they're ready for whatever that is. And, and then he hit me. So at the least, if nothing else, it's got that kind of unique, interesting kind of premise. So I'll give it that. But like I said, I didn't particularly find the characters charming or the movie particularly funny or any of the acting good or, you know, any of the horror, you know, no kind of tension for me. So I don't know. Ultimately, it just falls really, really flat. And it's just kind of. I'm just left with a dumb movie with none of the fun stuff to go along with what you typically expect to get from a dumb movie. So I think honestly the best thing about this movie and this is not speaking this is not a positive thing to say about a movie. <laughs> but the best thing about it is having seen it puts you in a community of people who can reference this together and like <laughs> When somebody brings up, you're like, oh, yeah, it's like a conversation piece more than it is an actual <laughs> fucking film. Oh, yeah, I've suffered through Motel Hell as well. Yeah, it's like exactly. a support group. <laughs> kind of. It, it's kind of like a signifier of, okay, this is the kind of person I'm talking to. We can we can be real with each other, right? That's a dumbass oh. movie. Well, I'm, already bon- I'm already bonding closer with many of our Slack, uh, you know, participants, <laughs> uh, you know, just, just on that fact alone. Like, uh, yeah, uh, we've been through it, guys. We... <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Bob? Uh, I'm going to come in with a two and a half on this as well. It's a big, dumb movie. It's it's one of those things that I get a kick out of, but it's it's inherently flawed for sure. There's not... They don't totally deliver on the comedy or or on the horror necessarily. I, I guess, for me, I enjoy the hell out of the comedy that it, that is in this movie. Um, but I get why somebody else might not feel the same way. It's, I don't know, it's, a, it's a good time with friends, I think. I, I'd recommend it. It's not on par with the, your sleepaway camps, obviously, because that movie's fucking perfect. That, um, movie, that, that movie is also not a comedy intentionally, and I think that matters. And I, I, yeah, yeah, I th- yeah, you're right. It totally does matter. <laughs> that movie's a fucking anomaly. It's lightning in a bottle. The fact that, that yeah, exactly. That's that's right. It's so bizarre that it exists in the first place, especially the choices that were made were made. That it it it, it makes it so much funnier. So when people are trying to be funny and it's not working for you, it makes it that much less funny. It's like a bad <laughs> comedy is infinitely worse than a bad action because right. actions aren't trying yeah, to be funny. Yeah, but I would agree with that. Yeah. I would agree with that. That's yeah, true. Uh, the best going to put our aggregate at a 2.2 for Motel Hell. Let's go ahead and get into our Rotten Tomatoes segment and see how our scores stack up with the critics and the users. Take it away, Juice. Ooh, as far as critics goes, this uh, small, small sample size on this one. So small that there's not even a critic consensus. Uh, the reviews counted from the critics, 23 Mm-hmm. Um, so 23 critics will go around the table. Uh, we'll kick it off with Bob. What do you think the critics rated this movie? I assume they were not kind. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to give this a 65. 
65. All right, Randy. <laughs> that that's your that that's unkind. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, you kind of really that's hyped that up. That's way kinder than I would anticipate. Can I'm I going go with again? A, I'm going with a 20. <laughs> Doing twenty percent positive. Yeah, and that's the thing. And uh, so it's a super small sample size, and it really is hard to gauge because it is a old what nineteen eighty? Yeah, nineteen eighty yeah. movie. So it's like, where did these you know reviews come from? Yeah, um, the time period old, when they came, they were written matters a lot. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like so the the score is seventy percent. It's seventy percent. Um, twenty three critics reviewed it 16 fresh seven rotten and just by looking at the um, reviews uh, like somebody specifically says like blu-ray review from the critics so yeah. it seems like these were recent so they if you're buying the blu-ray of this movie that's, like that's the that's the skewing ex- point exactly and such a small sample size the average rating is 5.9 out of 10 even with the 70 percent so exactly, that's the thing. And really, since there's no critic consensus, I was kind of looking at it. And I mean, it's pretty just basic stuff, like a perverse film, both in its humor and in its horror. Um, you know, for genre fans of the offbeat, horrific, uh, tongue-in-cheek, Scream Factory's impressively packed collector's edition Blu-ray release of Motel Hell is worth seeking out, even though he gave uh-huh. a rotten score. I don't, it, but it's a rotten score. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's because he had, like, it's like us. I like our score is rotten, but I still yeah. would recommend it under the right conditions. So, yeah, like this guy, it's meant to be weird, campy, and funny, but settles for being tasteless, gruesomely awkward, and moronic. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, moronic. 70%. It's, but yeah. Joe Bob covered this actually when talking about Blood Ridge a little bit. The he's like, he said that if any any movie that gets picked up by Arrow releases or by Scream Factory or whatever, like it's nobody ever they never like re-release one of these dumb movies and people go, oh, this is terrible, and they just say, ah, don't watch it. People just straight up swallow that shit up, and it becomes a community thing rather than a good or bad movie thing. And I think that's like, when you're talking about reviews coming from 2017, that's really not a fair indicator of what this movie actually is because people are riding that hype train for the re-release, honestly. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. There's no way around that. I, I love how he's like, oh, a movie that nobody's heard of in the past 20 years is getting a brand new Blu-ray release. It must <laughs> be good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah, if I had known that they were from 2017, I probably would have gone a lot higher. But I, I, I don't know. It's tough to say with Rotten Tomatoes of that small sample. Yeah, it is. It's so small. But like, actually, so let's hop into the audience score. Um, surprisingly, for like this B movie um, that was released in 1980, it's still a small sample size considering. But um, still, 7,000 uh, people uh, reviewed this movie. So. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Bob went first last time, so we'll go Randy first this time. Let's see. What do you think the audience rated this? Watching this movie, like I said, is like being in a club, and I think all the club <laughs> members are are in rousing support of the club. The club. So I'm going. I'm going ninety. <laughs> ninety. All right, Bob. What you think? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Oh, you're going 80. down one dollar. Um. Rob's going to take it. So the so the differences between these two is kind of surprising to me because I would have kind of followed the line of thinking of Randy as well. But this is 48% <laughs> of the audience. So the fact that people are coming on to Rotten Tomatoes to give this a negative score, 7,000 of them is surprising to me. I don't I don't know, man, but <laughs> man, I, I don't need any more I don't need any more proof that I cannot figure out Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, this one is a very strange anomaly between the critics and the people. The small sample size doesn't really help in either accounts, but um, this is more in line with our general score. Uh, ours was, what, a 2.25 or something? Um, yeah, so 48% is pretty close to that. So I don't know. Maybe it's kind of the same line of thinking. But uh, I don't know. It's a mixed bag for people. <laughs> Motel hell. 
Cool. Fucking hotel help. Yeah, nobody seems to. That's really the be... club, man. Yeah, it, it's a, yeah. It, that's honestly that's what I was trying to get at. Like, it is a fucking club. When people get excitedly start talking about Motel Hell, and you and you, somebody knows what they're talking about, that's that that's like a small thrill for a bunch of people who grew up with nobody to fucking talk to about their favorite yeah. movies. <laughs> Thank you, Internet. Mm-hmm. Randy, you got some trivia for us? I got a little. Lay it on my big daddy. Sure thing. So a lot of this is going to be enlightening as to why the movie is the way that it is. Um, First, for starters, this movie, the movie's original screenplay was originally a darker, much more disturbing piece with bestiality and a lot more violence. And it was not a a black comedy at all. (laughs) <laughs> Damn, they included the bestiality and it wasn't a black comedy? Yeah, I know. Shocking. Damn. Um, uh, wow. Should all this for deliverance? Um, yeah. So this is going to really enlighten things. Um, originally going to direct this movie, can you guess who it would have been for Universal Studios? Uh, Toby Hooper. Toby yeah. Hooper. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so you both got it. That was impressive. Nice. Toby Hooper was originally going to direct this movie for Universal Studios, but when the studio balked at the bizarre project, Hooper also departed. He pieced the fuck out and probably for the best. I want well, yeah, I don't know at that point too. It's like, oh, you're just ripping off my movie. Like, I mean, at that <laughs> point, fuck you know, at, least, yeah. at least he would have yeah. had it like, oh uh, yeah, I don't know. Any anything that would have kept Toby working was okay in my book, but sh- yeah, it's probably for the best that he didn't assign himself to this shit. Also, I, <laughs> this, we didn't cover this at all, and I really just think it bears mentioning. Movie called Motel Hell, very little to do with a fucking motel. Almost. True. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Why if it weren't for the people, swingers, like why are they it made people, no sense. Like yeah, there's no fucking. Just have people come to your motel and slice them up. That's all you have to do to trap people. That's true. That's true. That's, <laughs> God, what a weird. That is another kind of thought I had because, like, when I was saying there's, it's such a hodgepodge of just random ideas, like the hidden assist. I was like, why didn't they capital? Like, why does he need to like set bear traps and shit? Question like, why exactly, is yeah. the biggest <laughs> biggest problem with this movie? <laughs> that is true. Yeah, motel hell. And it's um, Motel Hello, and the O is out. Yeah, oh which nobody God. would call it. I don't know. Mot- bad name. Bad yeah, name. Bad name. Uh, what's our hotel? What are you going to call it? I don't know. First thing that somebody says to me today. <laughs> um, hell. Okay. Yeah. Motel Hell. I like it. Um, a scene with Wolfman Jack officiating a wedding at a church was shot, but cut from the final finished version of the film. That is what this thing says on IMDb Trivia, and I was like, who the fuck is Wolfman Jack? <laughs> I appreciate that man even more now, and I'm Man's really bummed that he... <laughs> he was in this movie. He's a minor celebrity, which is why he was in this movie, and why he is given so much attention as he does weird, dumb things. And he... uh Wolfman Jack was, I had to look him up, like I said, and, and I apologize to any Wolfman fans out there. I have, I, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I just don't know the man. But he was a disc jockey. A disc jockey out of, I think it was DC, or at least for a time. No, I'm sorry. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I only glossed this shit. He was a DJ. And so he was famous <laughs> for his fucking uh, gravelly-ass voice. He was in the fucking Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band movie. And one other thing. What was it? It was fucking... American Graffiti, apparently. American Graffiti. He was best known for America being in American Graffiti, a movie which, to my uh, shame, I have not seen and don't know much about. But, yeah, so he's like a personality. It's like if Tiny Tim's in your movie, Rob. Um, and there's the, That's the reason he's there, not for acting. <laughs> Any other reason than that? So there you go. And his fucking wedding scene was completely ripped out of the movie, so I guess it wasn't that funny. Um, Harry Dean Stanton, you guys familiar with him? Harry Dean Stanton. I, I know the name. Harry Dean Stanton from They Call Me Lucky, or no, it's not They Call Me Lucky. Excuse me, Just Lucky, The Green Mile, Repo Man, Alien, fucking all sorts of shit. And yeah, fucking yeah, tw- yeah, yeah. Twin Peaks. One of my favorite character actors. 
who has passed recently, he was approached to play Farmer Vincent, and he turned the offer down, which uh, was a, a good choice for him. That would have been cool, though. Stanton like, was a pretty choosy guy, as it turns out. I, I saw some documentary about him or something. And yeah, he's he's in all kinds of things, but he only does what he fucking wants to do, or he only did what he wanted to do. For those who a good choice, yeah, he did. Like he for to put a face to a name to for people as much as possible. He was in the Green Mile. He was the guy who would they would practice walking the mile with. He'd be like, "I'm walking the mile. I'm walking the mile. Oh, Sorry for all the shit I did." And all this stuff. And then in uh, the Avengers, he was in the Avengers as the security guard who finds Bruce Banner after he fought plummets from the, the Quinjet or whatever it was, or uh, yeah. whatever. Um, the shield base. So he's he's a character actor who's fucking great. Everybody should get see that movie Lucky. It's great. So, okay. Moving forward. In two th- this is a long one. In 2007 and 2008 interviews, director Kevin Connor ex- once explained his involvement on this movie. In Mar- quote, in March 1980, I'd been in Los Angeles for three months and was getting nowhere when I decided to collect some tapes from an agent, Bobby Littman. As I walked to the agency, he came out of his office to refill his coffee mug and saw me. He asked me how I was getting on, and I replied, not so good. Come into the office and I'll get you a job, he said. He called another agent who happened to have had an inquiry for a young director to helm a horror movie. This was Motel Hell. I told the Jaffe brothers that I would love to direct this movie as long as it was a black comedy and removing all of the unnecessary crudeness. They agreed that this is the movie that you see. They agreed and that is the movie you see today. I thoroughly enjoyed it because it was tongue in cheek, but you have to play these scenes. But tongue in cheek, but you have to play these scenes. And if you notice, you never see any gratuitous violence. The black humor appealed to me, and it wasn't in response to any other movie trend. Very pleasant shoot. And he goes on to like sort of like gush about how much the actors liked each other. So Dude, ruined I th- the movie. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I tend to agree. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Kevin, I'm sorry, Do but I'm gonna do your damn job. You. Like this is not no good wonder decision. you can't get fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> Make terrible goddamn fucking decisions. Shade. This is like this. You're taking a horror comedy in the early '80s, and you're not. You're gonna take out the crudeness, which apparently doesn't include breasts or cannibalism. But I don't know, man. That's a huge fuck up, in my opinion. Yeah, especially when you're like begging for work. Like, yes, okay, I'll take on this horror comedy, but you know, I appreciate uh, under this caveat that I'm going to take the fucking good shit out of it. It's like, fuck you. Beggars can trying, be choosers. It's like, Apparently. just make a comedy then. Like, just just make a comedy. Period. Don't make a motel hell. Find a comedy to make. Why? Anyway, then last but not least, this uh, United Artists marketed Motel Hell as a straightforward horror movie rather than a horror comedy, fearing that it, any quirkiness in the trailers or posters would put off audiences. Moreover, the tagline, you might just die laughing, still appeared on several motel hell posters. Nope. No worry of that. So, yeah. So they marketed this as a straight horror movie, which is like like classic like fucking seventies, eighties, just lying to your audience. Yep. <laughs> lying, lying straight up about what their movie is going to be. Chud it's so, two. It's that's so weird. It's like it's, uh, it's so weird to think of that process, and for because they had those thoughts like, okay, it needs to be a horror to be profitable. But we're going to hire this no-name fuck who can't even get a job and let him tell us that he's going to cut all the crudeness out of it? Like, what? What? But still market it that way? It's like, who's making these decisions and why are they making those decisions? It's like, hire somebody fucking else who wants to make a horror movie. How did this get made? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Uh, one thing that we did forget to do is uh, we need to find out who the cooter of the week is. How Just, many Justin? cooters? Of course, Bob. You always <laughs> keep me on task. I mean, is there anyone who's not a cooter in this movie? Maybe the girl, <laughs> but it's just uh, because, well, okay. she, just because she's kind of like she she's basically a paper figure. Like she's yeah, she's a standee. Any one of the family members could easily take the cake, and I, you yeah. know, I guess, I guess either one kind of falls more on the mark. Um, 
as far as the sister goes, I feel like she's the classic, like right hand, like dumb, you know, she's, uh, she's clearly got some kind of like, it seems like sexual infatuation with her brother. Right. Yeah. Seems. That way. Um, yeah. So got I mean, a little that's yellow King shit going on here. Yeah. But at the same time, the brother seems to exploit that. He seems to know that it exists. And uses that to his advantage. So he's got the manipulation uh, going on. He's got manipulation and the fact that he's like using, I guess, the like sex, like this. I don't know that you know he's not like shutting it down or you know. I don't yeah. Know. Like so, that's like some sexual deviance in its own right. And he's just well, got he that whole weird like woman. hang up. You know, he also stole a woman. He stole people's but, lives, but also but took like, this woman's won't, hacker. Won't bang her because. They're not married, Jeez. so he's got some weird, weird things going on. And then, and then the other brother, who's the fucking hero of all things, is <laughs> like, here's here's another thing that didn't fucking make sense to me. Dude's the sheriff in town, and he's got to go to the drive-in and like park way out on the <laughs> fucking hill and like use binoculars to watch the movie. It's like just go to the goddamn drive-in. Like he's I don't trying to bang. That's all. He wanted to bang. <laughs> Still, though, I mean, is in that stuff, isn't that that what people do at a drive-in, anyways? Yeah, I guess a cop maybe not, shouldn't. Not, we don't need I to mean, rationalize this. Yeah, I don't okay. know. That's a great, <laughs> but that's a great so, point. Great point. Uh, so I don't know. I, I'm they all it's the Cooter family, but I mean, I don't know. It's, uh... <sighs> I don't like I can't even justify like taking the other brother like the sheriff out of the cooter because he only like he only is the hero for selfish purposes. He only wants to bang this chick and can't stand that his brother is going to. (laughs) And the thing is, it's not even like his brother's tricking her. This chick is just fucking dumb. Like, so it's not even like he's manipulating her particularly. I mean, kind of, but um, more of like a stock. Like a Stockholm syndrome thing or what, whatever. She's like, so I quickly guess. was down, like immediately. She's down. like, "Oh, the only like, person I've ever loved is dead." Okay, can I learn how to smoke meat? <laughs> Why is she hanging? You need to get huh. your rest. Okay, I, I guess know. I'll do it here at a motel. Who's the biggest <laughs> cooter? Uh, I gotta go, Farmer Vincent. I think he's. You he's think taking so? The cake for me. He yeah. might- he might, I think he's got the most manipulation skills, and there's like the hint of the incestual sexual deviancy, and he's got those overalls. Yeah, the manipulation yeah. counts as sexual deviancy in his case because he's using it to woo yeah. a much younger woman who he stole yeah. and whose husband she ate. He's also like tricking swingers apparently into coming to his yeah, thing so he can eat that. them. So I guess there's that kind the of manipulation's element. way off the charts, and it really shouldn't be as successful as it is. But it's this movie, so of course it yeah. is. A little bit of smug arrogance too, I guess. The fact that he's like hundreds of people have been cannibals for I'm mean, for thirty years oh, yeah. my meats or whatever, yeah. you know. So like his his end goal is like superior or whatever. I don't yeah. So yeah, I guess Vincent takes the cooter cake. That's fair. Took it. We got him. We got him, boys. We, we got lock him up, him. boys. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta catch them all, boys. Let's go ahead and uh, end with a little bit of horde news. There's not a whole lot going on there, fellas. Uh, so we got to pour one out for a director that recently passed away by the name of Nicholas Rogue. Uh, you might know him as the director from 1973's Don't Look Now. And um, I think the three of us would know him more for 1990s The Witches. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, he directed some other stuff that I, I guess I've never seen before. Um, he, uh, the Man Who Fell to Earth, I've never seen that. Oh, uh, the Eureka. Bowie movie? Is, is, no, I guess so, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah, David yeah. Bowie. Yeah, I, yeah Bowie I've never jumped. seen that. I haven't either. I, I just know it by reputation. Um, he also worked on, like, uh, Lawrence of Arabia. It looks looks like he did a lot of stuff. Casino Royale. Damn. Um, a pretty influential guy. I think I've only actually seen The Witches as far as his filmography is concerned, and that shit fucked me up as a kid. <laughs> That's a great book. Uh, yeah, I need to watch it again. It genuinely scared the shit out of me. It's because kid. it's I, terrifying for children. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, the premise of it, and they do a good job. It was part of the 31 Days of Horror, and it... Um... 
Yeah, I mean, the on our effects, YouTube channel. Yeah, the effects are great um, on it. I don't think I, I didn't. I don't think I'd seen it growing up. Maybe like clips of it, you know, like I don't think I'd seen the whole movie all the way through. But um, you guys have recommended it for our like kids friendly week or whatever. And so I watched it and I was like, damn, like, yeah, that shit's pretty fucked up. Kind of hardcore for kids. I watched that shit frequently as a kid. Like that's that's one I watched probably five or six times before I turned 10. So damn, you hardcore. I loved it. I loved you it. Hard. I loved Roald Dahl. I was a big Roald Dahl fan when I was that age, especially. So like, there you go. I was I was trying to seek out anything he did, and there was very little <laughs> by way of the movies, except for Willy Wonka. So that was my next stop, and I loved that shit. Cool. Yeah, that's um. So pouring out for for. Uh... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, no, sorry. That, that's that's fine. Pouring out for old Nicholas Rogue. Um, I guess if you haven't seen The Witches, I definitely recommend the shit out of it because it was, it was it lasted. A lasting impression was formed upon me as a young lad. Um, and I guess I need to watch The Man Who Fell to Earth get some Bowie in my life. Um, the only other bit of news that I had going on here, we mentioned this um, a couple episodes ago, but the Satanic Temple filed a lawsuit with Netflix over the new uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina that came out because I guess they're the statue of the dark Lord that is used in that show is basically identical to the statue that, that they have and worship. Yeah. And they have like a trademark for it too. That was the only, we were talking about like, cause yeah. there were two, cl- there were two claims at the time. One was the it legit, like they had like, you know, it was their design. They paid to have it designed yeah. by either an artist in their, you know, of their faith or just outside work. So they had it, you know, so that that's legit. Like that's legit. I don't know if what they're asking for is legit, but like that's legit. But then the whole thing of like, oh, they're making us look bad. I was like, okay, no, that's not that's not yeah. legit. <laughs> so, yeah. They, okay. They they filed a fifty million dollar lawsuit, and they went on to say that uh, the show misappropriated their imagery and used it to represent evil deeds that do not mm. reflect mm. their specific values. So I, I guess they reached some sort of settlement. Um, and uh, the Satanic Temple released a statement saying uh, they're pleased to announce lawsuits recently filed against Warner Bros. and Netflix have been amicably settled. Uh, the Temple's attorney, Stuart Dahan, said the unique elements of the Satanic Temple's Baphomet statue will be acknowledged in the credits of episodes which have already been filmed. The remaining terms were not uh, made public, so we don't know how much money they were actually paid I um, think it was probably paid in virgins, you would assume. <laughs> 50 million virgins. <laughs> There's a I'm looking at like a side by side image here and it uh, the statue is fucking identical. You really can't Yeah, deny it really it. is. I mean, they put like kids around it and everything. And that's the thing. I was like, "You know what? If they pay to have it designed, they've got, you know, like the license for it, then yeah, fuck fuck, you know, them for stealing it." Like yeah, design somebody, your own god it's. Somebody I mean, up, yeah. how many different designs of fucking the devil are there? A billion. Like, it's. Like, you don't need a fucking copy of that. It's shit the show's easy. job. To, I can easily see like somebody who like not realizing that 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 image imagery was somehow copywritten, but that that's somebody's job on the show. So For sure. yeah, yeah, exactly. Somebody should have seen that red flag and if they didn't, then an honest mistake or whatever. But now you're paying for that honest mistake for yeah, legitimately. Yeah. They, yeah, I mean, they had a solid case. It's trademarked or whatever. It's just, I think it's a little weak, maybe. Yeah, and but. to even, to still to throw in there that, like, oh, it represents, like, evil deeds or whatever. For one, it's, yeah. like, at the it's, school. It's the where, devil, like, this, okay. Yeah, well, also, <laughs> it's the devil, but it's, like, at the school where this, like, little teeny bopper girl is going, and she's talking yeah. about, like, her boyfriend. And they're, like, I don't remember anything specifically evil about it other than they're fucking witches. Like, Easy I mean, money. Easy it's money, some yeah. dumb shit, and also yeah. yes, it's the devil. <laughs> come on, I mean, I, I come on to some the way that it was phrased. I can see the argument though, because if it was like, if it was any other statue, they couldn't make that claim because yeah, it's the devil. What are you gonna do? But it's attached to their church or whatever, and so I'm sure they have whatever their own tenets are and all that stuff. 
<laughs> that gets affected by how it's portrayed. Yeah. I get it. I guess too. But like definitely... you, we watch those fucking videos, grimy ghosts and shit, and people claim crazy. I mean, you're right. People Ew. claim crazy. Sh- like, look at the Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and its association <laughs> with cannibalism or some dumb shit. Fucking everybody is so like so goddamn dumb. Satanic panic and shit was that was started by people just saying random shit about yeah. you know about uh, whatever about people doing satanic worships or whatever whether or not it was or associated with any one ch- temple or whatever it doesn't matter because the damage was done at that point and people were getting like anybody who was involved with one of those things no judgment call on them but they probably had a harder time back when people thought that dungeons and dragons was a gateway to killing yourself because of satan like yeah. it probably affected them live responsibly people come on Stop exploiting Sort your everything. shit out. <laughs> sort your fucking life out, mate. Racist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a son of a dead reference. Cut okay, me. I was like, I except it, it was, was like heavily Australian to my I'm not Caesar. I'm not good with the accents. <laughs> Cut me a break. I was like, what are you making fun of Shane or something? Well done. <laughs> Shane's my boy. I'm not making Leave him alone. (laughs) (laughs) All right, gay. (laughs) Thank you, Randy. You're on my level. Damn it. Uh, That's all the news I had. There's not a whole lot going on. That's going to do it for this episode of Straight Showing. We're going to be back next week with a brand new episode. We're going to be talking about a new little picture called Anna in the Apocalypse. There's a trailer Mm. out for it now. It's, It's not hitting VOD until Friday. Um, so make sure you check it out so you're ready for next week's episode. As far as I understand, this movie is some sort of like zombie musical situation, Christmas musical situation. So this should be interesting. It's been getting some some solid reviews. Justin's giving me a hard side eye, like real hard. <laughs> Not into we it. We only got a few, a few episodes left for the year. We got a... Yeah, like well, we got that five. one. We got a Christmas special coming up. We got, of course, the uh, most Friday, looked forward five, to four. episode top 10 of the year, you know, where we're going to duke it out. Top 10. Yeah. Duke live. It duke it out. out live, Rob. I should be in jack. Duking it out face to face. Uh, so, yeah, until next week, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, we haven't got a rating and a review in a hot minute. And we, uh, we definitely appreciate those when you throw them at us. It only takes a second to do, and it helps people find our show. And we thoroughly appreciate it. It's, a, it's an easy way to support the show, and it doesn't cost you any money uh, to do so. Just a moment. Saves Rob your, money and Viagra. Your time. Much. What? Also, this is <laughs> potentially our first like Skype-recorded episode, if everything works out, right, maybe. Right. I don't know. We'll see. So potentially subscribe to us on YouTube as well, where we potentially will have <laughs> our episode video format up. So we'll maybe see how that actually it works could. Out. So we... if yeah, if it works out, check us out on YouTube. If it doesn't, then still actually still check us out on YouTube. Yeah. Well, the thing the thing about YouTube is even if this video doesn't work out. It, it, at least the audio will be there. So we're going to start That's having true. the audio for every episode on YouTube. And if the video works out, we're going to up it to have the video as well. So we're just, we're going to see how this works out. This is the first time trying the video. So God, just what everyone fucking needed. Our dumb ass Our faces. Our dumb it's like faces. Dumb ass shit. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll so yeah, see how this works out. Straight Chilling Podcast on YouTube. Also, uh, Shout out to the Slack channel. Everybody on Slack has been killing it, as always. If you want to join us on Slack, just hit us up on any one of our social media websites. Um, Let us know you want to join us, and I'll send you a link so you can do that. Get in on the fun. Um, You can follow us on Twitter at str8 underscore chilling. We are on Instagram at straight chilling podcast. You can send us an email through our website, straightchillingpodcast.com. Uh, And as always, everybody, please keep chilling. We did it. Cool.